uh, here we go. We have the very um, knowledgeable and informative Morse Yankel here with us today. Um, Mike had um, invited him to join us. They've known each other for many, many years. So I'm excited about all this info on the ATS system, which uh, baffles my mind and I'm a recruiter, right? So um, I get it kind of, but I think it's super important for people to know how to manage the ATS system. It's not like you're handing your resume over to a human, be human being. Um, it's really more of the system needs to um, be able to identify who you are quickly. So Mike, do you have any words you want to share? Um, well, uh, I thank everybody for coming on. Um, this is a bi-weekly uh, event that ManufactureNet has. Uh, Jane, of course, is the owner of Rising Sun Connections, and uh, I am in an advisory capacity to her business. And this presentation is great. Um, and uh, it's, it's really the best out there that I have seen uh, in terms of how to uh, beat the ATS. So I hope you get a lot out of it. This is uh, free content that we like to provide and um, reach out to any, any of us, uh, myself, Morris, Jane, uh, with any questions or uh, just to build the relationship. But uh, the market is tough. Uh, job seeking is tough. So we hope that this is an element that it doesn't always get talked about, um, but, but we think will provide value for job seekers um, you know, at any point in your career. We're going to bypass the, uh, normally we have introductions, uh, but given the, the, the content today, uh, we're going to bypass that. And, um, with, and, and Morris is fantastic. He knows what he's doing. I'll let him do a quick introduction. Uh, so we've known each other for years and uh, highly, highly uh, value and respect him. So I'm going to turn it over to Morris and uh, we'll get started with the, with the presentation. And please, if you'd like to, in lieu of in, in introducing um, all of us, um, please type your, your contact info, maybe your LinkedIn, if you have it, um, into the chat and feel free to network amongst yourselves as well. So, um, Morris, are you ready? Cool. Sure. Sure. Always. Uh, yes. So, Morris Yankel, um, I can start the, the slide presentation as well, but... Um, uh, my small company is called HR Computes, so uh, the name says it all, but nobody ever really understands it, which is totally cool. Um, it's, oops, start at the beginning, human resources technology. So that's like a jumbo shrimp, right, uh, an oxymoron. Um, I'm not going to, you know, others, uh, maybe it's smart government, I, I don't know. But um, human resources technology, it's all about... From the time you are a candidate to the time you are a retiree, technology is involved in some way. We don't sell any particular technology, but we make technology work for human resources. Today we're going to be talking about the cyber veil, hacking the ATS, save time, better process, more access, and hopefully better results. So um, this is me. Optimize what you have, select a new vendor um, or system the right way, and implement new technology. Generally, our clients are a CFO, a CIO, or a CHRO, or, you know, somebody maybe the next level down who has been tasked with the um, rather arduous task of optimizing or transforming human resources through technology. So those are great connections for me, if, um, if you know those. Here we go. Applicant tracking systems. So they were created because... You're getting more and more applicants, right? They're putting it out on the internet. They want more and more applicants. They want people to find out and apply to more and better jobs because they want volume. Hopefully then the cream rises to the top and you know companies can hire more and better people. At the same time, they also want your data in many instances for affirmative action or, you know, EEO, affirmative action plans, EEO kind of processing. Uh, and so the solution was create these online systems. It'll make it easier. You got a computer matching algorithm that'll help you. These systems will get into it, but they can score the resume if the company decides to use that piece of the technology. It can score resumes. It can help the recruiter weed through a number of resumes. But what happened is hundreds, if not thousands, 
of resumes a day coming in from qualified and unqualified people. So a catch-22 here is that we asked you to apply, now you apply, but you don't have to be qualified for the position to apply. So there are a lot of instances of people applying for a job that requires a driver's license, and they don't have one. Um, or requires certain other skills, you know, a little bit more harder to uh, maybe quantify, but other skills and they're not quantified. They're, they're, they're not qualified. And on the flip side, what happens, uh, it becomes that black hole into which you throw your resume, that false hope and frustration. So it looks like there's the perfect job for you, and you're out there, you apply on the ATS, and then, whoosh, mum's the word, nothing. So... The fact is, 75% of those resumes in an ATS potentially are never seen by a real person. So we're going to talk about how do you deal with that. Um, keywords, agenda, here you go. Here's, I don't need to read it, but this is the agenda for what we're going to talk through. Any questions, I have no problem with questions. You know, uh, raise a hand or just interrupt. Um, Jane, I guess it's totally up to you and Mike, but I'm fine either way while we're talking about it. But those are the things we're going to talk about. And I would just like to say, I'll leave it on the agenda, Michael and Jane, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, to me, you know, it's about getting your brand out there. It's about people being aware of what you do. Uh, I often kind of lately feel that social media is a little bit of a black hole um, because no matter what you do and how far, you know, you try to get yourself out there, it does seem like, you know, how do you get your next client? lightning strikes you know and that's where it comes from so but um, to me this is uh, my opportunity to explain applicant tracking uh, hopefully inform if you're in human resources what some of the options are for you from that side of the table and then certainly from an applicant side of the table let's talk about what are we doing and the most important thing here about an applicant tracking system again in my opinion and you know this is all opinion but the um, is get your resume in as quickly as you can, get it in there so that it can gain the highest possible score based on their algorithms, and then get out. Get on to the other kinds of things that we all know pay big dividends. Uh, looking at LinkedIn for who you know in the company or who your connections know in the company, et cetera, et cetera. All of the things I'm sure that Michael and, and Jane talked to you guys about and you know that you just you see the articles about it. But a lot of times the ATS is sort of that entree. Um, certainly, if you are applying for a very high top job, maybe you don't need to go into the ATS. But for the rest of us, usually the ATS is that first step. And a lot of times, uh, at least in conversations with recruiters that I've had, it's, hey, this is really good. I'm glad you tracked me down. I'm really interested. Have you put your information into the ATS? Again, it's because that's how they do applicant track. That's how they do affirmative action plans or just their own statistics on time to fill on a requisition or the best source for resumes, you know, best locations. But uh, there's a ton of analytics that they're trying or that they can pull out of the ATS. So um, here we go. Keywords are crucial. So keywords are things that are in the job description that you should have in your resume. And it's kind of a catch-22. You know, the more times something appears in your resume that is truly a keyword on a job description, the higher your score goes. And if you miss some of those keywords, then your score goes down. So I utilized something uh, just yesterday in preparation for this, and I was dismayed to see, uh, now it's been a while since I've applied for a job, but that my resume, which, you know, six months ago was uh, eight or nine out of ten for certain types of jobs, now was more like a four and a half or five. The language changes. So that resume that you did, you know, a few months ago, you may want to kind of take another look at it and update it. And we'll get into some of that stuff. But these pieces here, you know, the algorithms are smart-ish, just like any computer. It's only as smart as the computer kind of programming. And I know people tout AI. Uh, just an aside, what's the opposite of um, automated intelligence? Uh, natural stupidity. So the, um, the idea here is that Exact keywords may be important. It may increase your score. 
getting these uh, acronyms um, spelled out, you know, or correct the way that it is in the job description may raise your score. Oops, sorry, I went the wrong way. But how, <clears throat> how do you find keywords? So certainly you can go to the job listing, you can check out that job description, and so I'm just clicking around here in um, LinkedIn. You guys are probably all familiar with it. You get in, you look at a job, you use the sort of elevator bar over here, and then down below you can see um, what's that job description got. And on some of them you can even see how do you match up. So these are skills that you may have selected or, or that you did select for your profile, and then skills that they're saying criteria pr provided by the job um, poster. Now, this is one where I try to point out, like the word stabilization. It's an interesting word. What the heck does that have to do with, uh, you know, an HR director of HRIS? I'm not so that sure. But it's a word that they deemed important. And, and I could, you know, certainly dream up why they're putting stabilization uh, on there. But, you know, you do have a choice here to go back and modify your LinkedIn profile to add additional skills that meet this job. So you can see I, I didn't have that many of them. Um, and so I could go back before I click apply and decide, should I add those skills to my profile? And we'll get to a little bit of advice around how much time and how much effort you should spend on a certain job. So the next piece, you know, how do you find um, skills or uh, descriptions, a job description, or you know um, their resume. What are the words in their profile? So you can go in and look up in a search the job title that's right for you, and see who else is out there. What are their resume? What what does their profile look like? What skills did they select? Pick somebody who's in the perfect job for you, and that is a, a lot of times a leg up on how do I identify myself or paint the picture of myself in the best possible way. And especially people, I know we've, we're in that, what, what are they calling it, the great um, re, re, retention? No, it's called the great people leaving their job. There's a better word. Thank you, Michael. I knew You're it. You're welcome. Thank I got you. Um, and, and I know that's, you know, it is pretty darn true. You do see a lot of new people in jobs that you probably wanted. So again, things go out of style or, or you know, it's, uh, they've changed the words that are used in the last six months potentially for a position. Take a look in here, look at some people who maybe just stepped into that job and take a look at their profile. Again, the idea here is we're building keywords. At this point, we're kind of trying hard to build a resume that's going to match the jobs that are most important to you. Here I am just, you know, pick eight or 10 uh, things, skills that they have, add them to your profile. Or another way to do it, there's, and I'm going to talk about a couple of different software packages, and certainly um, Jane had asked me if these slides are available uh, to distribute, and, you know, sure, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. So this piece here is software called Word, wordclouds.com. When you paste a job description or the resume of one of your competitors in here, then it will provide you a world word cloud. I'm having trouble with that word today. Word cloud. The larger the words are, the more prevalent they are on whatever you submitted. So if I submitted a job description and I look at word cloud, experience, operations, systems, those are the words that appear the most in that job description. You know, uh, offboarding or customer, they don't look that important. The larger words or that prevalent, not important, but prevalent. The things that they're repeating multiple times are the things that appear strongest in wordclouds.com. Tag crowd's another one. So, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of these, but um, tag crowd does kind of the same thing. You paste it in and then it kind of shows you what appears most often. Because that, a lot of times, that is what's happening in the algorithm. It's looking at the job description, it's comparing it to your resume, and it's giving you a score based on how many of those criteria do you meet? How many of those skills do you have, or how many of those important job description words do you have in your resume? So, a couple words on resume format. What we're looking at is, again, 
the way to get into the applicant tracking system and get out as quickly as possible. So we are talking about, as Mike said it the other day, your ugly resume. I call it the ATS resume. Um, it is a resume that you have stripped of all beautiful things. Uh, we were talking about, um, <laughs> I forgot the movie, but uh, where she submits her resume to Harvard. Um, and um, thank you, Legally Blonde, and she's touching her hair there. Legally Blonde, exactly. Uh, she submits the resume and it's pink on pink paper and it's scented. And, you know, the team that looks at the resume loved it. So that's your beautiful resume. That's your perfect resume. That's your professional resume. What we're talking about here is an applicant tracking resume. Because applicant tracking systems, these days, almost all of them, bring your resume into the system and parse it out in order to use that resume, that information, that data from the resume in their algorithm. How many times do they repeat this word and how, how does it match our job description? So we keep it as simple as possible. We want to, no header, no footer, no graphics, nothing. This is a text only resume. And then very importantly here, use the same format for each experience line. You know, I've been, and you'll see my resume in a second, company, comma, city, comma, state, dash, title, and then start and end dates in parentheses because it's a computer. So when it looks at that line, it basically is looking for a way to parse out and fill in the form. It's looking for the company, the city, the state, etc. And if it doesn't see it, it's going to leave that part blank. And what that means is then you've got to spend time going in and correcting those blocks before it'll let you save. So that's why we're kind of creating this, you know, ugly or ATS resume. Keep your section name standard. Um, some of your job descriptions or your titles might be too long. And we're going to go through, you know, that you can test this. In all of these ATS systems, you can apply for a job, <clears throat> put your resume in, well, <clears throat> in all of the systems that take you through this process in front of you, you can apply for a job. There's a system out there called Greenhouse, uh, and there's others, but Greenhouse has gotten a lot of publicity. Uh, and they're doing it basically just post your resume, give us your email address, and, you know, click to apply. It's not an arduous process. So, hey, that's fine. Put in your professional resume, let it go. Um, you're in and out very quickly, move on to other things. But a system like Workday or iSIMS or, um, you know, most of the big dogs, the Taleos, the Kinexas, um, others, they are going through this process, and you will see it says, I'm parsing your resume. You put your resume in there, and then it shows you what's that resume look like, what does that data look like on an application. And I'm telling you that you can see if you forgot to put a city or state on your second job down, it will not understand that, and it'll basically leave it blank. If you've been promoted four times in a job, such that you have the company only appear once, a lot of times it will put that job title down there on the second or third job um, down the bottom. It does the first one correctly, but second, third, fourth, it just has the job title. So now you have to go in and do it. So the idea here is you're separating it out and you're making it very simple for the system to be able to read it. Take the objective out. Generally, these Res these ATS don't know what to do with it, but add a skill section. A lot of times it will allow you, uh, and it will then parse that out into a skills kind of box. And even if it isn't, those skills are being utilized, those words are being utilized in your score. So I like a skills section for an area where you'd be able to customize the resume. Did I hear a question? Did I hear a noise? <laughs> no. Um, so that's a great spot to use to customize your resume. Let's talk for a second about customizing the resume. If there's a job there that you would, I guess it's either kill for or die for, which is sort of the weird way, but it's the right job for you. It's where you want to be. It's the right company. They're green. They're local. You can do remote. I love them. Um, I want that job. Then, of course, 
Spend more time. Look harder at your resume. Potentially customize your resume for that job. Customize the ugly resume, the ATS resume, so that you can get the highest possible score. And, you know, customize the pretty resume that you're going to add at the bottom, the, uh, the professional resume. Towards the end, most of these websites say, do you want to ad attach additional materials? And you can attach your professional resume there. You can do a cover letter. You can do, you know, things that you've worked on before, et cetera. But that skills section um, in the resume is a place where you might add four or five additional skills just so that you're trying to boost your score on a job that, you know, looks pretty darn good, but it's not your killer, I want that job. If there's a job out there for you, then fine, spend the extra half an hour and customize. But for the 10 other jobs that you're you know, throwing in, you're giving it a try. Let's see how I do. Maybe I already know people in that company. You know, That's the time to use a formatted ATS basic resume. Um, resume length doesn't matter for applicant tracking. So the system doesn't care that you're submitting a four-page resume. It's a little bit of a catch-22. Right? If you go into a re uh, an interview with a four-page resume, uh, recruiters aren't going to like it. They, supposedly, recruiters spend seven to ten seconds per resume, if it even gets to a recruiter. So you want your professional resume to be one or two pages, professional, etc. But your applicant tracking resume, load it up. Now, what you will notice is that sometimes if your job description is too long, or, you know, the things that you achieved in this position are too long, that it leaves a blank where job description is for that job in the resume. Some of the systems do have a character limit. So in, in my, uh, my ATS resume, um, I had a, a particular job that was a very large paragraph, and I kept, you know, bringing it into the system and looking then. You look at the job application, and if you don't like it, you click back. And you can go change your resume, re-import the resume, and then take another look at it. You can see how that applicant tracking system treats your ATS resume. And so sure enough, I cut the job description in half, and boom, there it was. Or another one where my job title was, you know, whatever, vice president, uh, you know, pro project and program manager of human resources technology, something goofy, and it was just too long. So, you know, take a look. That's the idea is that you're working on your ATS resume in order to get it to be, boom, in the system and you move on. So that's the idea. Try a different resume style or different words on the same ATS. We're going to look at a tool uh, that Jane knows about or mentioned to me also, but jobscan.co. And then, of course, spell check your resume. So here's, you know, Marsh Yankel. Here's my um, ugly or uh, ATS resume. I have no formatting in any way. All left justified. <clears throat> Can you guys still see my screen? I got a weird little message there. We're okay? Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, my name, my address, um, information, the experience line, and then the company, the city, state, the um, job title, and sometimes this job title will mess them up because it's got all these commas in there, so you want to take a look. But then the uh, dates in parentheses, again, we're just trying to make it very basic and understandable. And then, boom, the next one, the full boom catapult, that's the company name, the location, and then the title, and then the dates. Again, repeated throughout. Um, and then when I get down here to education, and so, you know, here's other um, locations, other places that I worked. When you get down to location, this is an area that I see sometimes systems struggle. So my information is pretty straightforward. Um, I do not put in dates here. And so there are times when I'm in. Now, listen, they look at your resume. And in this case, I'm going back to, you know, when most of you were children. Um, but I, I go back maybe too far. That's an argument. But this is one of those conversations. I'm, I'm sure um, Jane and Mike talk about it. But if if they want to discriminate against you for your age, eventually they're going to be able to do it because you can't hide it. I mean, I swear I don't dye my hair. But, you know, 
at some point, they're going to meet you, and they're going to go, eh, he's not 30. Now, if they look at your resume and you got 30 years experience, you're probably not 30 anyway. But if you're putting your dates in here, and most systems require dates for any job that you have, they can sort of figure out how old you are. And the same way around your education. Is it more important to put in the fact that you have a master's degree or a bachelor's degree? Um, is it more important to put that information in here, even if you have to give the years? In my opinion, it is. So... You know, in my case, yeah, I graduated from the new school with a master's in HR uh, back in 86 or whatever, 80, yeah, 86. So this was, uh, and then, you know, even further back from that for my master's degree. So I don't have it on the resume, but I do see that a lot of times when it goes into the ATS, I have to take a minute, doesn't take that long, to add in the dates for graduation or something like that. Uh, and then here's a long skills section, right? So I list... Software that I've worked with, I list functions, you know, payroll benefits, compensation, that are human resources pieces. Here's more systems, talent development, salary bonus and stock planning, you know, all different kinds. Now a little bit about technology, middleware, SOA, SOAP, and then Six Sigma, you know, I have a Six Sigma, Greenbelt, um, et cetera, highly motivated, you know, et cetera. Um, again, skills that might be something that those companies are looking for. And this is an area that you can change pretty quickly, pretty easily as you look at resumes. I mean, as you look at job descriptions. Morris, as you list your skills, what are the advantages of the commas after each line? I well, know you I have a comma after each yep. line. Um, I do, although it looks like I missed one here. But yeah. um, what happens a lot of times, if it's parsing into a skills section, on the application, a lot of times that comma will help the system, you know, kind of read it. So uh, these are, you know, software packages. Whereas SAP Success Factors is the name of one system, and so hopefully it will uh, take that and it'll understand that. Um, if it didn't have the comma, it might run them all together. Okay, um, thank you. So that's, you know, just Makes an sense. idea. Again, as you pointed out, it's a computer reading it at this exactly. stage. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's the whole point of the ATS resume, Mike. You're 100%. So you can put your resume into a system. You can then push it over and you can look. How did the ugly resume, how did the ATS resume match the job application? Did it get in? Can I get in and get out very quickly? But it doesn't show you what's the score of that resume. How did the system kind of match up against the job description? So here is a software package that's free up to, I think it's 10 scans per month or something. Uh, but it basically does exactly that. Here's my resume. Here's the job description. Okay, and when you say scan, it gives you a report about how'd you match, how'd you do, and you can go back, change your resume, and then try it again. That's kind of the whole idea. Now, again, to me, this is something that you probably want to try with your ATS resume kind of at the beginning of your search or, or at the point where you're saying, okay, these are the broad band of jobs that I'm going to apply for. These are the, yeah, I'd love to get this job, but it's not the killer, not the be-all, end-all job. It is, let me get my ATS resume where it gets a good score on the largest amount of jobs that I'm going to apply for. And so you work it. You spend some time with this. You could, you could spend hours. But you spend some time to get your ATS resume to the point where you're getting a good score, maybe not a 10, but a good score on most of these criteria. You take a look. These pieces here tell you what's missing. It gives you a lot of information. So this is a pretty cool tool. Um, and so now you've got an ATS resume that you can utilize for that, I'm going to say, 80%, 90% of the jobs you're going to apply for. When you hit a job that is your be-all, end-all job, then fine. You can go back into something like JobScan, uh, or another one is called Resonate. And I have a list of these coming up. Um, it's R-E-S-U-N-A-T-E dot -E com. But again, you'll get the slides. Um, that also is another one that gives you a lot of information. Now, if you are in a job search, um, you know, hardcore job search, then it might be worth it to pay for this, right? Ten scans 
is not that many. Um, although here we are coming towards the end of the month, you'd get 10 this week, potentially, you know, 10 next week. Um, but you could decide. That's, that's up to you. But um, what's nice is work on your ATS resume with an 80% job and see if you can push your scores up. Then when a killer job comes along, now you might take the extra time to get in there and really kind of mine and go. We've mentioned this before. Has anybody used JobScan and uh, has any opinion on it at all? Maybe not. Okay. I like it. It's. I think it's wonderful. I think it's a great, it's, you know, it's a leg up if you, if you, you know. I, I agree. I mean, I, I also, I was, because, again, prep for this, I was a little bit surprised that, I guess, what did this say? Nine out of ten, seventy percent, you know, skills, whatever, format checks, etc. Seventy percent is not that high, but, you know, again, I was just wanted to get some screen prints, uh, whatever, a while ago. Now, when I use JobScan, I was more like forty-five percent. So, Things change, and you know the job description changed. Admittedly, I didn't use the same job description because it was a different job. But yeah. it's kind of cool to see. It's it's certainly um, information that's worthwhile. And again, from my perspective, that ATS resume, you want to get it to a point where you're getting reasonably good scores. You certainly. The other thing is, you throw it in there, and you get a twenty percent. You got a problem. I mean. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, if I, <laughs> I wasn't the best student, but I don't remember too many times I got a 68% on a test, right? So Amen. Yeah. I think about it that way. I think, well, if I'm going to spend the time and energy to apply for a job, I would want to make sure I was above just okay. <laughs> I agree. And actually, the cool thing here is, like, in this case, you know, it's given me a green or whatever, but it, I got 19 out of 44. What the heck? 19 out of 44, what am I missing? You know, maybe it's not, not the right job for me. Or, hey, it's just the fact that I need to, you know, take another look. So, so these other ones, so JobScan and Resonate are two. Now, Resonate was a little more complex, I thought, and I think that they don't give you a lot of free scans. Um, but it, you know, very interesting. It was funny, though, um, both of them, when I used them this last week, um, gave me a, ve a very close score. They both came back with a, a reasonably close, you know, mediocre score. Um, and then these other ones are, you know, CV lift. It, it generates keyword based on a job title. Um, th this one looked interesting. I honestly didn't go uh, all the way through it, but it's got some kind of resume analyzer. You know, and, and now it's trying to give you extra, again, keywords, right words down here, Wordle, um, some of those other things, the word cloud stuff. Um, basically, it's giving you ideas to put into your job description. So, again, you'll, you can have the slides. So. so, now you've got your resume in there. You're reasonably, think you, you got a good resume and you got a good score. You don't know that from the ATS, but a lot of times that next step is the knockout questions. So if you're in human resources right now and you've used an applicant tracking system, I would love to hear your feedback as to whether or not you ever used the score that the system gives you. So there are an awful lot of companies that basically they don't even look at it enough to use the score. Now, many of the ATSs will score the resume automatically or score the application automatically, and then it will just move you up in the list of candidates, right? That list of candidates is not just um, chronological. Give me the newest ones on top. It will give you the newest best, or it will give you the best candidates based on that score kind of naturally. That's a lot of times. And, and they have the ability as a recruiter or as the ATS HR technology person to decide how should that sort work. But a lot of times that score will change where you are on the list. But a lot of folks don't use really the score. It's bizarre to me. Um, you know, I, I certainly could see where you wouldn't, that wouldn't be the only thing that you use, but the score is there to try and help. And if you're getting a thousand resumes a day, you need help. So you can only look at a certain number of resumes. Potentially, why not look at the best ones or 
why not do your own search on the database? Maybe you want to hire folks from Rutgers or Harvard. Okay, I said it, the H-bomb. Um, that's, you know, okay. Then you could look for people who went to that school. Or maybe you want to hire people or not hire people who went, you know, worked at GE or Honeywell or whatever. Maybe there's companies. Maybe you want to look for certain words in their resume and do a search. So those are other ways to, you know, historically black colleges or whatever. Um, other ways that you can increase your diversity pool that's outside of the score that maybe the system gave them. But utilizing that search is another piece of ATS technology not many companies use. It's again bizarre to me. I, um, I think maybe in this environment, People are starting to use it more and more, um, but from a, an, an HR perspective, I've seen where they have so many resumes and so many candidates in their candidate pool, which is what they wanted. Um, that was one of the big reasons to do it, uh, but they're really not plumbing the depths of that pool and they're not, you know, kind of panning for gold and the gold's out there. So what they do a lot of times is they will take certain questions as knockout questions and you should take them seriously. Because a lot of times, those knockout questions are um, exactly that. So the one, the couple that are, you know, naturally, you can tell it's a knockout question. Do you have a, uh, are you able to work in this country, you know, without uh, sponsorship? Do you have a, a license? Are you over 18? Okay. Um, but then things around, you know, some people say, what salary should I put in if it asks me for a salary? The catch-22 is, it depends how much you want the job. Just like, you know, anytime you're negotiating for buying a car or something like that. Um, if you have a line you will not go below, then okay. If you have a line that you'd really like to be, then okay. But understand in your head that could be a knockout question where if you put in 200000 and their limit is 180 or whatever, they might not consider you. Um, but again, it, just like they're going to find out how old you are, to me, you know, honesty is the best policy within reason. So knockout questions are important. Don't kind of skip over them. Now, I put this in here, avoid the C resume responses. Um, I've noticed that not as many uh, questions are being asked that would require you to put in a long, kind of winded, you know, answer. Um, but... This is a spot where a little bit of it uh, comes against my theory or, or what we're trying to do here, which is get your resume in there as quickly as possible. They've got your resume. It's parsed it out. Now, are they going to ask me the same darn question that they did already? And again, usually knockout questions are going to be places where you click a box or a radio button. Because the system usually is not smart enough to read a paragraph and decide, I'm kicking you out because of that. Do you have 5, 10, 15 years experience? There you go. That could be a knockout question that they've set it up. Do you have a master's degree or a bachelor's degree or whatever? Those are kind of knockout questions. So keep an eye on those. Um, you want to be honest. You want to be truthful. Um, but at the same time, you want to get an interview. So if you have 25 years experience... And they're asking you, you know, how much experience do you have? Maybe you say 15 years experience. And when push comes to shove, you know, they say, well, it seems like you have more experience. Well, I thought it was in this particular area or whatever. Or, hey, they're not going to pick you anyway because they want somebody who's younger. But um, I always put in, you know, the truth. So the idea, yes, yes Mike. Morris, um can you go back one slide, talk about the knockout questions? And I think you may have covered this in another presentation you did uh, for me, um, which was the salary question I think everybody wrestles with, right? And everybody should know that it's a minimum number, not the number that you'll end up with or what you may truly want, but it's a minimum number. But that being said, I think you mentioned, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the strategy of putting zero in there for salary so it's a numerical value, um, and some systems may accept it, some may not. Uh, could you yep. comment on that? So it, it may. I mean, same way like putting in a dollar. I mean, a dollar it would probably take. Zero it might not take. Okay, but, or a dollar. But yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, I mean, if I were the recruiter, 
uh, I would sort of look at it as, okay, they're desperate, they need a job, which is okay. Now, or smart ass. <laughs> or smart ass, Michael. <laughs> That's possible. Um, I think that a lot of times we know the going rate for a job, you know, or gosh, in LinkedIn, they even give you minimum and maximums, you know, kind of an idea. Or you can go to salary.com or you can go to Glassdoor and you can look up things and you can see stuff. Um, so you kind of know the minimum and maximum. Um, I think it becomes really a question of what are you willing to accept? I have definitely seen where somebody puts in, let's say, you know, 50000 And now what they're really looking for is 75000 And so when they go in and they start to negotiate salary, they get an offer for 50000 And they go, that's ah, unacceptable to me. Well, you put in 50000 that you're willing to accept it. I mean, I don't know that it would come down to that, but you're giving them the idea that you're willing to potentially take less. Now, I have gone into interviews where I said to them, I won't take less than X. And they offer me less than X anyway. <laughs> so, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But I do think uh, that definitely if you put in a number that's too high uh, and they're just, you know, they're just not going to consider it, you might get maybe not knocked out. Maybe your resume, because you've done your work, gets a high score. Maybe they take a look at it, but then they go... You know, we don't want to pay two hundred for this, so yeah. then you can get knocked out. So okay, yeah. thank you. And some states sure. now are requiring to post the the um, salary range, so that which should is make, cool. Should, yep. Yeah, I think so. It should take the gamesmanship out of out of this, but I think the right strategy is. I always advise people: you should have a minimum number in your mind, yep. a walk away number, as I call it. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a bad strategy to put in a number you really want that could knock you out right right out of the gate. So and I think you're, yep. trust me. True, true. And I think especially with this great resignation stuff that's going on, you know, maybe the pendulum is back in the candidates area yep. uh, and you have yep. some flexibility there. So yep. um, there's also ways, and I'm sure you guys talk about this, maybe it's not all salary. Maybe there's a sign-on bonus. Maybe there's an extra week's vacation. You know, there's ways around um, pieces there. Hey, Morris, it's Lynn Loxo. I wanted to Hi, ask a, a question, and maybe you already touched on this, but, you know, so in, you know, some of these, um, you know, systems where you're applying, you know, they're asking to put your graduation date from college. And, you know, to sure. me, it seems like it's so inappropriate. Um, but I've had, I've applied to a couple of things and, and then you get yeah. down there and it's like, okay, well, that's going to take me out of it, <laughs> but there's no way around it. I think you kind of said right. what it is. If it's a required field, it's a required field. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, uh, you know, yeah, we, we did mention, uh, you know, honesty sort of is the only policy in this case. Uh, you don't want to put in, you know, bump up your graduation date to more recent, uh, eventually that they're going to potentially check that. And, you know, even if you had the job, you might lose the job for falsifying, falsifying your application. Um, to me, if they are not going to hire you because you graduated in 1986 or whatever, uh, then they ain't going to hire you when they meet you. So, um, yeah. Lynn, it's very commonplace now for recruiters and companies to ask that question. I think that that they figured out that that's a legal way to ask your age, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, or at least it's a it's a it's a pretty clear indicator. Not always, right? Uh, but it's a pretty clear indicator of uh, of your age. And um, it's obviously been supported in the courts, um, so I believe because it's just becoming more commonplace. I I worry that that's going to be a standard question in the ATSs of the future. If it's not already in every every ATS and um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, honesty is, you know, you got to answer it, right? And um, I've always answered it. Uh, 1987, I graduated college. So there you go. Do the math. I, 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 I tell go. people. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, the other piece of it is, do you skip the college degree piece at all completely? Nah, you know, now that's potentially a straight knockout question. 
you know, did you graduate college? Do you have a master's degree? So, um, anyway, yeah, you do with it. It's, it's, it's a tough spot, but to me it's, um, and almost every ATS I've seen, if they ask for your education information, or for that matter, your uh, employment history, they ask for the dates. And it's required. It's not an option. Um, the other thing they ask is if you graduated, you know, yes or no. And if you did graduate, you know, make sure you check yes. <laughs> so, uh, you know. So you've done the resume. You've got your score up. How are we doing on time? Ooh, okay. I'll just go quickly through. But these are really just a list of places because, again, the idea is, do I want to work at that company? Do I know what they do? Do I know people there or do I know people who know people? Is there a way to get a connection there? Um, just uh, my current client, uh, as a story, there's a guy that I have networked with for many, many years here in the Philadelphia area, a, a senior HR person. Um, there have been a couple times when I thought I was going to get in there to work for a company that he was with. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it hasn't happened yet. But he introduced me to someone at a company who was more on the clinical research side. I had a great conversation with this person. It has nothing to do with human resource, resources or technology. But he knew the CHRO. After our conversation, he had a conversation with her. I got an interview with her. And boom, I got a client out of it. So it's not just, you know, what you know, it's who you know, um, and it is what you know. So understanding more about the company is, is important. A lot of times in, a re in an interview, they may ask you, what do you know about our company? Um, there's tons of places to get information about that. Uh, and then these are a couple. Um, Fairy God Boss is a kind of a cool one. It's a little bit more geared towards... Um, you know, a female point of view, and if they are, I don't know what the right words are here, I'm politically incorrect, respectful of women, or if they're looking, you know, more um, for uh, that side of the world, whatever, I, I'm going to get in trouble. But, you know, it's just a little bit more towards, um, it's, it's really cool, it's interesting to see. And then these others, and certainly, indeed, LinkedIn, um, but the idea is even Facebook. Um, Glassdoor is a good one, you know, again, just to see what do people think, how did the interview process go? A lot of these will show you, you know, hey, it's a six interview process, this is killer, these guys run you through the thing, you know, it's worth kind of taking a, a, a look at. But I cannot stress enough that LinkedIn gives you that ability to see your second or third connections, or to look at the first connections that you might not be connected to of your first connections. You can do a search by company, and then it will show you, do you have any first or second connections in that company? And that's a good way to kind of go, okay, well, I don't know somebody in that company, but Mike Rivera does. So, Mike, can you introduce me to that person? Jane, you know, that way is, um, is really valuable. And, and then I just showed, you know, comparably... Um, looking at Comcast, I mean, you know, it's pretty interesting. They rate the CEO. They say, you know, how, how did that person, leadership, reviews. I mean, they got 700 plus reviews, and this was a long time ago. So it's an interesting piece. Again, these are just a, a couple of items. You know, understand the expectations uh, and growth po potential, the culture, those kinds of things. You can find a lot of that stuff out. Um, who are their competitors, et cetera. I, I just list a few things that you know, you might get asked questions of, or why do you want to come work for this company? Well, you have a great reputation, and I understand your culture to be X. Um, that's important to me. And there's a networking piece, referrals. Uh, there you go. Um, have the second resume. Uh, there's two really interesting, Enhanced CV and Canva are two pretty cool sites that help you make the pretty resume. That's the one where you can get the pink paper and the perfume like Elle Woods. Um, but also, you know, formatting the line and box and it may be a picture, put your picture, you know. So to take a look at those, it's the other side of the ATS resume. And here you go. Okay. Um, I mean, these last couple slides don't necessarily uh, have to go through them. Um, and they'll be in the, the thing, but it's, it's just to sort of show you who, and this is a, maybe a, a year old, who are the big dogs out there for applicant tracking systems. A lot of times in the 
address at the top when you're applying, you will see somewhere embedded in there the word Taleo or Workday or you know Brass Ring. You'll see that Brass Ring slash the company name slash other things. And you might sort of start to say, uh, gosh, when I apply for a job through Taleo, it's a pain in the butt, even with the applicant tracking resume. Workday is famous for that. They've gotten a little bit better, but um, in the beginning, their parsing, not beginning, but even a year ago, their parsing mechanism just didn't do a very good job. So now, Workday is a huge system in big companies. So potentially, it's a necessary evil. But it's also a place where when you see it's Workday, or when you're having trouble getting it to parse your resume, you might look in that address and it would give you an indication, oh, it's Workday, all right, let me spend a half an hour because it's such a popular system. Let me get my ATS resume to work with that system. So I tried to uh, you know, show you this. There's a little more information here about a couple of these systems and how they use knockouts, what matters frequency. Uh, there's the sexy beast. I mean, it's, it's definitely um, the big system out there and then here you go this is a thousand plus jobs who are the top ten um, four to five hundred jobs you know who are the top ten etc um, and then there's a couple of cool things here that will be in um, but you can get Google alerts so if there's a company that you really want to stay on top of you could get information about that hunter IO is a kind of a neat uh, search engine for again more information about companies uh, more, um, I'm going to call it factual information, but it's you know more information from the company rather than from reviewers. So, and hey, ATS is here to stay. Keywords are important. Format, go with that ATS versus professional resume. Look out for knockout questions. Spend your time doing your interview research and your networking. Don't spend your time filling out time after time a job application in an ATS. I think awesome. that's it. Cool. Very nice. Anyone have questions? Oh, come on. I have a question. Have Good. Um, I have a gap because I have not found a job yet in this pandemic and um, also some other family issues. Um, mm -hmm. And am I getting kicked out of the ATS because I don't have anything current? Um, I mean, you could be, I would try job scan and see, you know, what your scores are. Um, I would also, so again, because you can go back and forth with job scan or, or, um, resonate, I would try, you know, put in a consulting job at the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe it's not a hundred percent true, but you know, looking for a job is a lot of work. So you've been working, <laughs> but you know, put something in there, or even um, to the point I've seen where folks will put in, especially in today's environment, you know, maybe they had to take care of a loved one. You know, maybe there was a situation where they, they did home care for the last year for somebody. Now, if the company is, you know, we all know who Jamie Dimon is. <laughs> no, he's, you know, whatever he is, CEO of some giant bank. And he's the one who said that um, if people want to get ahead, then they will come back to the office. And he mandated that every, yeah, okay, he's in, he's in whatever. He, it was what he said. I'm not going to, I don't want to say anything on tape that's going, Jamie could come after me. But so maybe a company like that's going to look at that and go, we're not hiring her. You know, so, but on the other hand, you get a company that goes, boy, we're all in that situation. Maybe it helps. But it'd be interesting to see, my point was, it would be interesting to see what something like JobScan does. If you have a gap, your last job was two years ago, what kind of score does that give you? As opposed to maybe you put a consulting thing in there that just says, you know, I was looking for uh, uh, consulting in these areas, utilizing these skills, and now it's another slot where it is, um, you know, keywords are, are in there as well. Uh, the fact that you had no business, listen, a lot of people have had no business the last two years, but the fact that you were, you know, you can articulate the things that you've been trying to do or the things that you've been trying to look at. You know, again, I would, I would say take job scan and see, see, see if it gives you a different score. I do wonder in this environment if people have a gap like that, um, 
Does it really matter? I yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have a definitive answer, but I would try a couple things. Well, I can give them all the details about our situation with my in-laws, um, but that's kind of a like too much information. I maybe, would agree. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. Because uh, you know, like just briefly my father in law had a stroke last <sighs> April and yes, yeah, so we passed away this past April. Oh. God. oh. So it was a long haul, um, yep. and I'm still like, I need to call my mother-in-law this morning. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and, hey. and make sure she's, you know, taking her pills and everything like that. So. Yeah. I mean, to put in home care for relatives during the pandemic, potentially that's something you could put in there. Again, I would see what job scan, it's kind of like maybe too much information. But, right. So that's you what know. I thought I should test it. Yeah. Yep. I think you that's know, a great idea. Am I better off idea. not saying anything or better off like giving a little scoop on you know, on that. Um. Now, now is the time that once you reach a human being, if they're a decent human being, they'll have compassion for you. And I talk to people all the time. They're like, oh, it's no big deal. You know, it was COVID or whatever. So, right. so I think once you get past the applicant tracking, I think, you know, it's definitely worth a shot to, to check it out. Like Maura says in job scan, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, I think, but your, but your feeling, I don't want to give you feelings, but if you approach it feeling less than, or mm -hmm. you're coming at it with a deficit, then that you need to proudly just be able to go in and say, this mm -hmm. is what I've been doing. This is my job. Yeah, I mm -hmm. help my family during this mm -hmm. crisis, period. Amen. And I think too, the other piece is like you said, you know, how much detail do you go into around your personal situation? Maybe not that much, but just the fact that we've all lived through this and that you have two or three practice lines that you kind of utilize for that. Um, but also to add to it something around, you know what, I did a lot of reading. Um, I, I, you know, stayed on top of Harvard Business Review or whatever, and I took a look at different articles. And here's how the things that I... Uh, transpired in my life over the last two years make me a better employee or make me a better, I don't know, engineer or uh, HR person or whatever it is because tie it into your past experience. Hey, back when I was in employee relations or back when I was a manager and I'm talking to employees, maybe I didn't have the kind of compassion or empathy that I would have now. I've really learned a lot during this time, and this is something that is going to make me that much more of a contributor in your company. So, but again, you got to get to the human there, whether it's through LinkedIn, whether it's through your connections. Um, but it's a great, Cynthia. Thank you for asking. That's a sorry for your loss, but really good question. Others. You covered it so well, Morris. There's no questions. <laughs> All their questions were answered during the presentation. Well, it... yeah, I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, you know, just last thing is, hey, creating that ugly resume is, it is, it does take work. Um, and if you have any questions, you shoot me a note, give me a phone call. I'm, uh, you know, LinkedIn, whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm more than willing to take a look at your resume. Mike sent me his, and I haven't done crap with it his ugly resume. So once again, Mike, I'm writing it down on my list of things to do. All right, my friend. Okay. Uh, but I, uh, you know, seriously, I will get take a look line at it. Me. Yeah, 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 get in line. Exactly. Um, so, yes. And that ugly resume just makes me like, ooh, it's just so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it works. I mean, try it. it. Works. Yeah. Right. So, so, so Morris, thank you. I'll let Jane have the sure. last word. I just wanted to thank you uh, for your thank time you. and this was a great presentation, and I, I hope everybody got something out of it. And, you know, I, I've heard this a couple times, and I still wrote down notes of things that I, you know, learned. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll pass around the presentation, as Maura said. And so I hope this is, you know, uh, helpful for you. So, uh, Jane, last word, it's 1030. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to re record this, and then I have this very um, – talented assistant, virtual assistant, who will load it up onto the Manufacture Net YouTube um, channel, which I completely forgot about. So anybody who wants to access that, um, you can. 
and then I'll follow up and I'll send the links as well. So, so fear not, I will. And maybe what I'll do is I'll take a picture or whatever. I'll do a what screenshot just of a couple of the pages that have the most information. And I encourage everyone to connect with Morris on LinkedIn and connect with each other on LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, wonderful. So uh, we appreciate it. Have a great day, Morris. Thank you. Thanks that. for the opportunity. Good thank luck, you, everybody. everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye.